Am I the asshole for not telling my mother where I go on business until she gets my postcards? So I'm 48 years old, my mother is 66. My mother has always been, highly concerned, about me. I'm an only child, and she is very antisocial. We do not live in the same city. Just as an example it took her 50 years to move out of a city she disliked. She does not like change at all. The few people in her circle are, her world, in life. I think she is growing upset that I am pulling out of that circle. I took a job recently that is all travel, and when I get to a place I send out a dozen postcards to my friends and family that tells them where I went. But my mother has been upset that I have not told her where I am when I go there. Her, hi kiddo, may we know what city you will be working in this week? I know you don't like us to tell you, but we do wonder and worry. It's a mom thing. Quote dot. Me. You realize that takes all the fun out of sending you postcards, right? Her, ah, but the postcards don't arrive until after you are long gone from where you were. But if you don't want to let us know where you are working while you are there, we will respect that, of course. Frown. So that was a few weeks ago. Today I post a weather warning on Facebook and forget where I posted it and say I'm in Cleveland. Her, you are in Cleveland then are you safe? Quote dot. Me, well, the storm is in Cleveland. I never said that's where I was. Hey. Quote dot. Her, please just tell me. Then I go lay down and take a nap for a few hours. I wake up to this email from her other half, who is also a total worrier. Subject. Not funny. When you die, we will not know where you are. Every time you refuse to disclose the city where you are working, it is as distressing as if you died. Dot. It is painful to your mother when you refuse to tell her where you are. If you are deliberately trying to cause her pain, you are not who I thought you are. Quote dot. Which actually pissed me off. I see this as bullshit guilt. I'm an adult, I can do what I want, she is acting awfully entitled to know where I am all the time. I mean I carry multiple forms of ID and contact information, if I died they will know in short order where, when, how. To me making sure to tell my mother where I am is just a painful reminder that she does not consider me an adult. Which is a huge thing I struggle with. I have very few friends. On top of this my mother does not tell me about her life. For example she was diagnosed with a hereditary disease years ago that she never told me about. Which I was very upset about. I only found out because I saw a letter from a foundation in her mail when I visited. I didn't want to worry you, was her reason why. I have not responded to this yet, but I really want to put my foot down and stand my ground. However I thought I would post here first and see what people thought. Thanks. Update 1. I started the whole postcard thing as a way to check in with folks that did not feel like an obligation. Texting every time I get to a new city does feel like an obligation. Like I'm 5 and I have to check in after dark. I also went ahead and replied to my mother on Facebook with, I actually started the postcards as a way to check in with folks that did not feel like an obligation. But I just replied to her on Facebook with, I'm sorry. I will take you off the postcard list and stop posting information about my travel so you don't worry. I didn't mean to upset you. Because I didn't mean to upset her. Update 2. Well fuck. I just realized that one of the reasons this all annoys me is because I've been fighting to live a more free life for the last few decades, and the fear from my family about travel and meeting new people is a huge part of what's holding me back. They are paranoid and think every plane flight is going to kill them, and new people are going to stalk them. Not the asshole. You are an adult and you travel for work. That means it's a bit much to keep her informed of your movements. Mom has to make peace with that and, if she can't, then she has to live in her discomfort. It isn't your responsibility to soothe her worries. That being said, it was unkind of you to play with her emotions by not saying if you were in Cleveland and then not responding to her text, unless it was truly inadvertent. And making it about the surprise of the postcards does sound selfish, even if you don't mean it that way. Better to stick with explaining that you're trying to feel independent. You need to voice your boundaries and then stick to them. She will learn to live with it. I mean, given that she is your mom and you're her only child, it would be nice to give her a verbal heads up on where you are going. My sisters, brother and I always tell our parents when we're going on vacation, trips, business stuff and so on. And we're all between 2738. I would say a light you are the asshole because the reason you are withholding the information is for your own pleasure. Your mom does not enjoy not knowing where you are just to be surprised by your postcards, but you do. As an adult, you have a right to your privacy, even from your mother, which complicates things. If you just didn't want to tell her where you are, I would say not the asshole. 
I would say stop sending her postcards as she doesn't enjoy the suspense. Tell her where you are or don't, but don't bring her into your game. W Taxual F? Not the asshole you're an adult. If your mom feels like you die every time you leave town then that's above Reddit's pay grade and she needs a professional. Not the asshole you're a grown adult op. My grandmother is riddled with anxiety if me or my dad travel or do anything different, more than she is usually, so we have stopped telling her until we're home. She did not have the reaction your mother did by any means. It stresses everyone out less so therefore we all have a better time. For your own sake at least, keep doing what you're doing. Plus the postcard thing is significant other cute. Not the asshole given the context of how your mom seems to have a hard time treating you like an actual adult, and especially if that pattern is present in other parts of your life. You are already doing more than enough with the postcards. My husband and I go to cities, states, countries without telling my mill and Phil because they are too controlling and needing to know all of information and whereabouts. But we do tell my parents because we want to and we enjoy sharing things with them. All about context. Not the asshole you're almost 50. You don't have to tell anyone where you are and your mom's partner has no business scolding you. Not the asshole. I am having powerful flashbacks to being a young adult and having to do the same thing. I cannot believe you are still doing it in your 40s. Dot. Honestly, I would cut them off from your travel life completely. No more postcards, no mention of travel, etc., until they knock that off. When you talk to them and they ask, just tell them you don't discuss your travel with them anymore since they can't handle it and redirect the conversation. Am I the asshole for not hiding my condoms? Hi everyone. It's basically what the title says. I, 20F, am a student and live with my mother, 55. But we don't really have a good relationship, we don't talk much and I definitely don't go to her for advice or anything. I am sexually active and have been with my boyfriend, 20, for about 2 years now. My mom says she likes him and he comes over quite frequently, and I go, sleep over to his place too. This morning I was minding my own business when she came into my room and started looking for a charger. I keep them all in a small box under my desk, my backpack was open and on the ground next to it, so she saw the box of condoms inside. I noticed she saw them and didn't think much of it, but earlier she told me that I should hide my condoms because she doesn't want to see them or know what I'm up to. It was a bit embarrassing, but I told her I did nothing wrong since they weren't in plain sight anyways, and if she doesn't want to see things then she should just ask me for whatever she needs instead of barging in and going through my stuff. At this point she just started saying some really nasty things, calling me a prostitute and such, so I just left. Now she's acting like nothing happened, but I can't help being upset. Was I wrong for not putting my condoms in a drawer or something? Edit. Wow. I didn't really expect that many answers. Thank you to everyone that took the time to write a reply. I feel relieved and a lot better now. It was also quite fun to read some of your replies, so thanks for the laugh. Some people have been asking why I'm not moving out, given the circumstances. Both my boyfriend and I are studying full-time to get a degree and we live close to our university, Europe, so it's just more convenient to live at home. Where I'm from, it's a law that parents have to support their kids until they reach financial stability even if they're over 18. Doesn't apply if said kids aren't studying or looking for a job, and it's quite normal for people to be living with their parents until they're in their mid-twenties. I will definitely move out once I get my degree, but for now it's just more convenient to stay here as I can focus on my studies. A few people also told me to watch out for my mom tampering with the condoms to teach me a lesson, frankly I don't think she's that evil but she has been making jokes that I should have a baby soon so she can raise it ever since I was 15. Both my boyfriend and I dismissed it as awkward and in poor taste jokes, but I'll definitely move my condoms. I'm not having kids until I know for sure I can provide for them, and I'm not totally convinced I'll let my mom anywhere near them either. I also saw some comments about how she grew up in a different environment in different times, and I agree. Unfortunately generational trauma is very real and women everywhere still don't feel safe speaking about or doing things that are completely normal. That being said, I don't hate my mom. I think she's one of those people that isn't fit to have kids, but it's not her fault. I tried speaking to her about seeing a therapist, but she keeps refusing and getting violent, so I'll just mind my own business and eventually move out. Lastly, I also unfortunately read some comments of people that could relate to this whole thing. It made me feel a bit better, knowing that I'm not alone, but it's also unfair and just horrible. Everyone deserves basic respect and sadly, we cannot choose our parents. Let's stay strong until we can move out.
Thank you to everyone that replied, you made a girl feel better. I will also never doubt myself again on this kind of things lol. Thanks again. Not the asshole. This is the physical version of, EAV's droppers never hear anything good about themselves. If your mother doesn't want to see your stuff, she shouldn't go raking about in it. Not the asshole well, it was her mistake to just barge in and search through your stuff instead of just asking you if you have it. To keep the condoms in the drawer and not just lying on your bed or table or something. Not the asshole. Glad you're using condoms. Not the asshole you're an adult person and can keep whatever you want in your room, be it in a drawer, backpack or on the desk. Not the asshole. You are being a responsible adult and your mom is acting harsh and judgmental about it. Condoms are nothing to get in a tizzy over. You're doing fine. Ignore her and keep on keeping on. Not the asshole. But I'd hide them anyway to avoid earache. Hide M under her bed maybe lol? Not the asshole my dad tried to help me find something I lost one day. He thought they might be in my room, and they totally could have been. He went to my bedside drawers and I told him not to open a certain one. A back and forth of why not. Just don't. But why? Don't. Happened. He opened the draw to my vibrator collection. He shut it pretty fast and we never spoke about it but he listened after that. And hash x200b. She fucked up and didn't listen. It was in your space. Surprise to her. You're a human sexual creature. Not a you problem. She needs to r realize you're an adult and can do as you will. Oh no an adult having safe and consensual sex with an adult. Whatever will your mom do? Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for not letting my son's grandma into my apartment? I know it sounds silly and petty, but let me give a bit of background. My son's grandmother has a tendency to overstep her boundaries with malicious intent. She's been doing it since my son's father and I split 10 years ago. Examples of this would be inviting herself into my apartment without my permission to find things to scold me about. She once called CPS on me because my son forgot he ate dinner once and she didn't bother calling me for clarification, they of course found a well-fed kid and cupboards full of food. She also keeps a notebook on everything I've ever done wrong. The one time I got a speeding ticket nine years ago, she once picked up my son and he was wearing the same colored shorts she saw him in a few days ago and called CPS on me for letting him live in squalor. She didn't like that I got a Rottweiler despite her being amazing with my son. Just the pettiest of things that she'll always try to use against me if I ever disagree with or question her. She also has a habit of manipulating, gaslighting me whenever I bring up concerns with my son's dad. I tried to bring up a concern about him going to jail for his third DWI once and she told me I was just trying to brainwash my son into hating his dad. Needless to say, I've come to learn to keep her at as much of a distance as possible. I recently moved and am taking this opportunity to start fresh in a new town with new people. Although my son will still have regular visits with dad and grandparents, dad's visits are court ordered. Grandma asked where I'm living and if she could come see my apartment. I told her the location I was in but said I wasn't comfortable with her in my apartment. Good lord was that apparently the wrong thing to say. I'm now being told that I must be covering something up like drug use or criminal activity and she's demanding I let her into my home or she'll call CPS for endangerment. I told her to go for it and she only has herself to blame for my lack of trust in her. Now I have that entire side of the family on my back saying I'm a terrible mother for not letting her come over. Am I the asshole for wanting to keep my distance from someone I don't trust by not letting her into my personal space? ETA. She got my son to tell her where my new place was today, and she drove by a few times. I've told her point blank to stay away from my apartment and she told me not to ask her for daycare help ever again. Son is 10 and in school during the day and old enough to be home for an hour until I get home, so, whatever. One more edit. I do plan on fully cutting ties with her. While I've been in the process of moving I had to have her watch my son twice because his dad didn't want to, which of course she held against me, but I didn't talk to her much if at all when I picked up, dropped off. She's not out to take my son from me or anything. She genuinely does this stuff to be malicious and to try to keep records of how I'm a bad parent to try to make her son not look so bad for his alcoholism, borderline abandonment of his kids. He has three, all with different moms, that he only sees one day every two weeks. She's not a threat to my custody. She just wants to keep her own tabs on me in the off chance my son doesn't want to see his dad anymore so he can take me to court which I'm more than okay with because then I wouldn't have to pay the court fees to change custody so I have full physical and legal woman shrugging but now that I have all of my odds and ends taken care of, I've told her not to contact me unless it's an emergency, 
and if she came to my home uninvited I would contact the police. Not the asshole talk to your lawyer about not allowing her to contact you. All communication should be through your ex or through the courts. Not the asshole. Is there any way you could file a restraining order or something of that kind? Does the father live with her or is the father bringing the child over there for his visitation? I can't imagine her being able to call CPS falsely so many times without a penalty of some kind. Keep your head up and document everything. Don't call only text and all that. Not the asshole get a restraining order Jesus Christ. She's filing multiple false reports with a government agency in an attempt to remove your child from you. That's harassment. I don't care who she gave birth to. Not the asshole. Look up the laws for your area and see if there is any law about knowingly making a false report to CPS. In some areas that is considered a felony and all you'd have to do is show proof of her threat. Let me see your apartment or I'll call CPS. And that could land her in some serious trouble. CPS hates being used as revenge. I'd also talk to your lawyer and see if there is any way you can block her access to your son due to her antics. Not the asshole let her call CPS. Personally I'd file a restraining order. She sounds like a lunatic. Not the asshole. Do not let her find your address. She is a danger to your child and I would look into getting a cease and desist drawn up legally. She once called CPS on me. I'd have shut off all contact after that. And as I read the rest of your post, I see she's reported you to CPS more than once, and threatened it on other occasions. She does not have your best interests in mind. She has made it clear that she cannot be trusted. Instead, you should trust your instincts and keep her away. Not the asshole. Not the asshole she's trying to get you. She doesn't even actually care about your son he's a pawn in her game. He wore the same shorts a few days apart. I don't know how old she is but I'm sure she knows washing machines exist. Am I the asshole for embarrassing my cousin in public? My 36F cousin 30F can be a real piece of work sometimes, but she's family, so I put up with her. The other day, we were having a bit of a family get together at my house, as most of my family is now fully vaccinated and we haven't seen each other for a long time. It was a really nice time, and at one point we were talking about my aunt who had just lost a significant amount of weight. My cousin looked directly at me and said, I'd be so disgusted with myself if I ever got fat. Gross. Well, I saw red. My sister and I are both overweight. We grew up hard and learned early on how to eat our feelings. My cousin knows this has been a lifelong struggle for us, and my sister, in particular, is very sensitive about her weight. I looked at the expression on my sister's face, and she looked like she was going to cry. The room grew quiet instantly. I looked back at my cousin and said, you're some kind of dumb bitch, aren't ya? This is where I think I started entering asshole territory, but I was pissed. She stammered, Wheel, I obviously wasn't referring to you. I replied, either you think I'm an idiot, or you're the idiot. Dot and the first option doesn't count. You don't have the looks, the intelligence, the wit, or the balls to come for me. If being thin is your only claim to fame, I feel sorry for you. Or something close to those words. My cousin got angry, called me a bully her favorite name for me whenever I call her out on her own words, and stormed out of the house. Most of my family were laughing because I'm always mouthy, and they said she should have known better. Her dad said I was a little harsh, and I agreed with him, but also acknowledged it was a super bitchy thing to say and she was obviously trying to make some sort of weird point that I'm fat and she's not. We all moved on with the day, and my cousin came back later, but avoided me. Later that night when everyone left, my husband told me he felt sorry for her because she's a miserable person. She has zero friends, works a crappy minimum wage job that she hates, and has never been in a romantic relationship. He told me we have a lovely house, a lovely marriage, great careers, and I could afford to be the bigger person, I don't think he saw the irony in that statement. Mr. Voice of Reason thinks I may have been the asshole and I could show more graciousness in some situations. Navigating family dynamics can always be tricky, and I'm usually quick to speak and could probably learn to bite my tongue. At the end of the day, my cousin has a lot of issues, and I do care about her. Most of the time. Except when she's trying to be superior to me because I'm fat and she's not. Am I the asshole? I just can't seem to let people say whatever they want without consequences, but I do know I have a more forceful personality than some, so maybe the power dynamic is unfair. Edit. Just to add because some commenters are worried my cousin won't learn any lessons from me, going nuclear, on her. Dot she came back to the party and avoided me, not anyone else. 
She knows what she said and why she said it, and it's not the first time I've heard similar from her. I've seen her since, and she's been in my home since. She lives five minutes down the road. She gives as good as she takes in other encounters, but this one felt like I crossed the line in my response, so I thought I'd ask this subreddit their opinions. My cousin is fine. Our relationship is fine. My family is a lot to handle, yes. Lots of drama. Lots of personalities. Every event is like this. We are who we are with each other. Not the asshole. This wasn't public, this was in front of family. She does sound like a miserable person. I wonder if she has a body dysmorphic disorder and that is eh why she lives so small, taking up so little space. Not the asshole. There's no need to be the bigger person when someone flat out insults you. Not the asshole. My cousin got angry, called me a bully. Says the actual bully. If she can't take the same attitude she shouldn't display it in the first place. Esh. You both insulted each other. When you responded, it went past the point of what she said to just criticizing her intelligence and looks. You both need to think before you speak. Everyone sucks here but I'm definitely leaning more towards you being worse. Your complete freak out and tirade was just insane. What you think is standing up for yourself and others is just being a bully. You didn't stand up for anyone. You just knocked someone down harder. Esh. Cousin was thoughtless and cruel. You punched back, but it seems like you punch a lot harder. She deserved it for whatever shit point she was trying to make, but it sounds like you could have stopped her without the verbal takedown. Doesn't make you wrong for putting her in her place, but doesn't make you innocent either. Esh. What a charming bunch you all are. Esh. Her for making disparaging comments, though I agree with her sentiments, some things can and should be kept to oneself, and you for completely blowing your lid. Your family gatherings sound fun, 